Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One from San Antonio in the Alamo Dome from the Alamo region. It's the number two seed Cardinals of Louisville taking on Northwestern, the seven seed, who got their first NCAA win in 28 years, beating UCF in the first round. The winner of this game will get Oregon in the Sweet 16. The Ducks just beat Georgia, Stanford, and Missouri State match up uh, on the other side. And we welcome you to San Antonio. Pam Ward along with LaChina Robinson. And Louisville comes into this game, the number two seed in this region with a superstar in Dana Evans. But she hasn't looked like herself lately. Yeah, Louisville did get the win in round one, but it took a collective effort. But the national player candidate of the year in Dana Evans is someone that has to get going for Louisville to be at their best. She has had more turnovers than assists in the postseason. She just has pressed, according to Jeff Walls. In fact, he sat her in the third quarter of that last game. But when she is playing well, Dana Evans is unstoppable. Three-point line, she can get to the rim and create her own shot. She is clutch when the ball is in her hand in late games. But this is what she will have to do more of, rely on her team. She cannot do it all herself. Jeff Walls told her, you have nothing to prove. Relax and play. And Haley Van Liff among her teammates playing very well. She's their leading scorer in the postseason. And for Northwestern, you cannot forget about Lindsey Pulliam. Yeah, Lindsey Pulliam has one of the best mid-range games in college women's basketball. She can go get her own shot, had 25 points in round one against UCF in a win. And she, they will need some scoring from her tonight. Pulliam, a senior from Silver Spring, Maryland, very confident coming into this game. She said, I'm beyond confident. I'm taking us over everybody. Her thoughts going in as Northwestern finally got a win. They've not been to the tournament at all since 2015. Probably would have made it last year. Definitely would have had it not been called off. The Northwestern in their dark purple uniforms. Contact right off the bat. And Olivia Cochran, the freshman, comes up with it. And right away, you see that Northwestern will pick up defensively, but they will get back in a 2-3 matchup zone. They call it the blizzard. It is the mark of Joe McEwen's programs. Turnover. This is where Northwestern likes to be in transition. Jordan Hamilton knocks down the first shot. Yeah, this game could be a little bit of the battle of the turnovers because Northwestern not as sharp in the half court offensively. They have to get the pace going, turn you over to get some scores. And, and Louisville doesn't turn it over a lot. And neither does Northwestern. So which team can be more disruptive? Northwestern, in fact, first in the nation in turnover margin. Robinson with the miss, then fixes her ponytail. Here comes Hamilton up the floor. She goes the length of the floor and draws contact. Northwestern in the open court where they want to be. They have struggled in their half court offense this season. Let's take a look at our Capital One starting lineups. For Northwestern, they don't go very deep. Usually, they'll pr probably play about seven today, but Burton and Pullian make up that dynamic backcourt. Not a lot of size on this team. In fact, they, Paige Mott at 6'1 is their tallest player. Yeah, they play small, which allows them to be mobile in what they do defensively here, as you see them picking up again in that three-quarter court zone. And another turnover here, this one by Louisville. Louisville yet to hit a shot. They've missed both of them, and they have two turnovers in the first minute and a half of this game. Yeah, they have all the turnovers, and that's a good thing for Joe McEwen. He really wants to get up in Louisville with their offense and not allow them to get comfortable. Sidney Wood working against Van Lift, kick, kicks it back out. Paige Mott with the turnaround off the mark. Mikasa Robinson. Been starting the last several games for this Louisville team and just brings them good defensive intensity and pace. Dana Evans misses again from three. And the matchup to watch on this end of the floor is definitely Dana Evans guarding Burton. Jeff Wall said he wants her to focus more on her defense. He said she can be disruptive with her defense. It's not just her offense. She's a balanced player. 
Bloomington off to a terrific start. So we take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for Louisville. This starting five, Robinson stepping in for Elizabeth Balagoon, who had started 16 games. Cochran and Van Lith are freshmen. Kiana Smith, a transfer from Cal. Cochran with the miss. Robinson able to zoom out and get it. Louisville starting cold today. That's a foul on Mott for setting an aggressive screen out on the perimeter. And of course, it's Mikasa Robinson. She has the responsibility of guarding Lindsey Pulliam. And Mott just does not get there in time. Moving screen. Mikasa Robinson finds a way every game to get extra possessions, whether that's offensive rebounds, getting steals. I mean, she adds so much value on both ends of the floor. She was on the ACC All-Defensive team this year. That's a nice move by Cochran. And the screen came on the back side of that zone by Mikasa Robinson. That's a way that Jeff Walls wants to attack that 2-3 matchup. He wants to screen and try to get some matchups on the back side using his size. Cochran fell down, and that left Mott wide open. Evans gets it back to Van Lith, who has good range. Shot clock going into single digits. Dana pulls up. One of the reasons why Joe McEwen loves that matchup zone is that you can guard the three-point line, you can match up, but you can also double in the post, and they've done both of those things so far, and Burton gets it going the other way. Louisville got off to a slow start in their first round game against Marist, actually trailed going into the second quarter, and held by as many as nine, and here they are down nine in the first quarter to the Wildcats. Smith off the back rim. One of the other keys for Louisville offensively, they have got to move the ball inside out play. If they start playing one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be a long night, and the night has started off long for the Louisville Cardinals. Northwestern leads 13 to two, timeout. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Duracell Optimum. That is Joe McEwen dancing after they found out that they indeed were going to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015. The China comments, critiques. Those moves are a little questionable. I don't know if it's the happy feet. Maybe it's the mashed potato. You would know. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. This is our last game together. Veronica Burton, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. You take a look at their resume, and we, we talked. That's a three-second violation, another Louisville uh, turnover. And we talked to Coach McEwen earlier today, and he actually was disappointed that they got a seven seed. He thought that they should have gotten uh, better consideration. They did beat Iowa twice. They beat Michigan, both of those teams in the Sweet 16. But he's like, hey, we got to play who's in front of us. And they were, they were excited for this matchup. And so far, they're playing very well, and it's really anchored in their defense. Cochran using that height advantage. Robinson, not much of a threat to shoot from out there, but Kiana Smith is. And they're not getting many second chance opportunities when they do miss, and they've missed eight of their nine shots. Well, the three-point shot is going to be important for Louisville to balance out that zone that Northwestern is playing. The trouble is they have not been consistent from three, especially down the back end of the regular season into the postseason. And that's why Jeff Walsh stressed a lot of screening inside and moving the ball, trying to work it around. He doesn't want them settling for outside shots. And yeah, he said it would not be a good sign if they just try to shoot over that zone. Elizabeth Dixon, number 22, is checked in for Olivia Cochran for the Cardinals. Louisville with the definite depth advantage in this matchup. But you know, they don't, they don't have Jordan Hamilton. 
Hamilton is lining it up to start. And Jeff Walls was willing to give Northwestern some looks at the three because they don't shoot it at a high percentage, only 26% from long range. But it's March. Everything goes in. Yeah, they only average four makes per game. Two for two for Hamilton, who Coach McEwen said he really needed to score today. And she has done that with 10 of their 16 points. Boy, well, Louisville's got to get the ball to the weak side. They are really stuck on one side of the floor. Now, a player that is playing with a lot of confidence, the freshman, Haley Van Lith. Van Lith led the way with 17 points in the victory against Maris a couple of days ago to come from behind win. Dana Evans picks up the foul. All four NIT quarterfinals come to ESPN Networks tomorrow, beginning with Mississippi State Richmond at 6 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Dana Evans picking up the personal foul. She has not scored, has missed both of her shots. Louisville back in that zone. Northwestern looking to attack the high post. Van Lith whistled for the foul. And Jeff Walls known mostly for his teams playing man-to-man -man defense, but he told us to expect seeing some zone today, and we've seen it already. Yeah, he said, we'll play whatever we've got to defensively, and he is a guy that likes to switch it up on the defensive end. Um, even mid-possession gets a lot of his defensive philosophies from Paul Sanderford. Um, and he was a heavy influence on, on Coach Walls early in his career, and he said, we'll play whatever defense works. Meanwhile, that's the second foul on Haley Van Lith. For Louisville. William at the line, second team all Big Ten this year. Last year she was in the first team and she wasn't too thrilled about being on the second team. Coach McEwen thinking that Lindsay is using that as motivation. I mean, she's one of the best players I've watched, one of the best scorers that I've watched in college women's basketball. So I was shocked to see her on the second team. But there are a lot of really good players in the Big Ten. But um, it's okay. I like angry Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what kind of mood Jordan Hamilton's in other than a scoring mood. She got the steal and the basket. Hamilton has 12 points, seven more than Louisville. Dana Evans had it blocked by Wood. How much ground Northwestern is covering defensively. I mean, she got hit by a screen and your teammate is in help position, ready to step up. What a block there by Wood. Sydney Wood, the junior from Olney, Maryland. Coach McEwen, she comes from St. John's College High School, and Coach McEwen says he really likes those kids. A great program, a lot of terrific players. That is Balagoon, who almost went up and down. Shot clock. Dying. Balagoon with the miss was not a shot clock violation. Northwestern thought Balagoon's shot was late, and Louisville takes advantage. Good job by Liz Dixon asking for the ball. She has to be hungry for it in the middle of the floor because if Louisville doesn't get paint touches, it's going to force the outside shot, and that's not what they want to get this game. Dixon, the transfer from Georgia Tech, and another outside shot, this time for Burton. Western coming out firing, hitting their shots now. They're 73% from the floor. They've hit all three of their threes. Evans calling for the ball. Guarded by Pulliam out there. Good drive, another good defensive play. Courtney Shaw getting her hand on the ball that time. Just deflections, tips by Northwestern. Northwestern sharing the ball while well, Louisville struggling. Four turnovers, shooting just 20% from the floor. Northwestern has five points off those turnovers. 
Haley Van Lith on the bench with two personal fouls. Northwestern already five block shots. They only average four per game. They've been able to attack through the high post at Northwestern. <laughs> it's their day for three as well. Wow. Aaron Satterway coming in off the bench. She only averages about three points per game. First couple of years, not play, did not play much at all. Evans, long three, hits it. Dana Evans finally able to bury a shot. There you go, and towards the end of the first round game against Maris, Dana Evans did come back in the game and had some success and could feel good coming into tonight, and I'm sure that shot came with a sigh of relief. Yeah, she did have 15 points, but was just one of eight from three. Couldn't go back to back. Dixon with a physical rebound, but couldn't hold on. Northwestern comes into this game only shooting it from long range at 26%. And they had been working the ball through the high post, and that's how they were getting the looks at three. But that time, good feeling by Satterwhite. She lets it fly. Just her 13th three of the season, the redshirt junior, Satterwhite. Got clock off. A little bit too strong off the glass for Shaw. Evans has a little bit of time. And another block with authority this time by Lindsey Pullen. The recovery here by Northwestern. Dana Evans going full steam ahead, but Pulliam using her length to be disruptive. Northwestern with 25 points in that first quarter, shooting 64% from the floor. Cats off to a great start. Welcome back. Northwestern up 15 after one quarter in large part because of the work of Jordan Hamilton. Well, she's from Frisco, Texas, and she's in her home state and ready to play. Lining it up from three-point range where she has not been a consistent shooter. She's four for four in this game. She's only shot over 40% once in her last seven contests. So for her to be shooting the ball this well, is outstanding for Joe McEwen's team. She's got 12 points. Louisville has 10, which is their fewest first quarter points all year long. In the 25, they've given up. Ties their most given up in the first quarter. 18, they were down 18. That ties their biggest deficit of the season. All that happening in this first quarter. Louisville did trail Marist by three after one on, on the first round game and by as many as nine early in the second quarter before they got things in gear, but boy, Northwestern is just red hot from the field. Dana Evans, another three and another miss. She's now one of four from out there this evening. And you would think that Louisville could get some offensive rebounds as Northwestern is playing that matchup zone. Now, matchup does help you a little better because it's almost like you've got a player to box out, but they've got to get on the glass with the way they're shooting. Bono runs in to Burton. Enrique Kono played well against Maris at five points, but six steals. Jeff Ball's very complimentary of his bench and the way they played as Dana Evans heads to the bench. Yeah, Kono is a sophomore that missed a lot of time with injury the second half of her freshman season. So she took her a while to kind of get into a flow this year, but has a high basketball IQ, reads the game very well. Hot clock, winding down. Good defense out there by Balagoon. Really good job here by Louisville. You know that Burton is going to run the show on the offensive end for Northwestern, and Balagoon is an underrated shot blocker. She's got long arms, good wingspan, 
And she's a player that Louisville could really use some production from on both ends of the floor. She has hit a tough stretch in the regular season into postseason where she has not been effective. Algum could not catch that pass. Burton. Contact, no foul. Alana Smith, number two in white, got back to defend. Gives it over to the other Smith, Kiana, who's bottled up in the lane and threw it away. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Saturday on CBS and TBS. You, or you can stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. A change defensively here for Louisville. They're going to pick up a little bit in some pressure zone, just getting back into a man-to-man. -man. Only a fadeaway over Balagoon. Tough shot. Dixon able to chase it down. Without Van Lith on the floor, without Dana Evans on the floor, where can Louisville go for scoring? Kiana Smith is definitely an option. She's got experience. The transfer from Cal has played in the NCAA tournament, even though it was not with Louisville, but she is a capable scorer and a leader. Kiana Smith is the only starter on the floor right now for the Cardinals. Only Mikasa Robinson and Dana Evans have started, or played, pardon me, in NCAA tournament games before this year. Good contest there by Kiana Smith. You cannot allow Pulliam to get to that mid-range shot. Pulliam, one of the best, don't you think? I, I know you, you've commented about, especially the way that she was able to hit the pull-up jumper. Oh, man. And, and it, she's improved in how she can get into that mid-range, you know, to coming off the screens, her footwork, how quickly she gets that shot off. See, she's been on a scoring tear. Dixon with the turnaround, no good. Follow shot by Alana Smith was off the mark. Those are the kind of chippies you've got to make in this situation if you're Louisville. And if you're not sure, pull it out. Get a good shot. Oh, and that's way too... Too much pace on that pass. Northwestern has missed six straight shots. They have yet to score in this second quarter. Alana Smith out, Olivia Cochran back in. Dixon right back to Kono. A lot of movement for Louisville right now. Dixon got to get into the lane, and it rolls out. Another missed shot right at the rim with two feet in the paint, and that's where Dixon's actually improved this year, is in her finishing ability. I mean, her field goal percentage has gone up 10% from last year. But those are the kind of shots that when you're struggling, you got to make. See the field goal percentage at 59% this season. William, nope. Northwestern as cold now in the second quarter as they were hot in the first. Dixon with the advantage. Paige Mott with the foul. Really good decision there by Elizabeth Balladoon to get the ball to Cochran because Northwestern doesn't have the size to deal with this. And it's power from the freshman. Really confident. Probably getting a warning here. Got a little worked up. But Jeff Walls is going with a double big lineup right now. Dana Evans out of the game. He had Dixon in with Cochran. And they do have some size and power on the interior. That can be a challenge for Northwestern. Louisville on a 7 nothing run after Cochran misses the free throw. Winner will get Oregon in the Sweet 16. You can keep Northwestern in the half court and play the percentages. Now, they've been hitting threes, but if you play the percentages, how long can they hit the long ball consistently the way they have so far? Well, they haven't hit anything in the first four minutes plus of this quarter. Stuck on 25 points. Dixon gathered. And the easy follow for Cochran. Northwestern needs a timeout, and they take it. Louisville has scored all six points in this quarter. The NCAA Women's Championship.
presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Welcome back. Louisville on a 9-0 run after Northwestern blew out of the gate, six, leading 16-2, but Northwestern has missed eight straight shots, 0 for 6 in this quarter. They have not scored in the second quarter and have gone almost six minutes without a point. Louisville did a better job of getting the ball inside of that zone using their double big lineup, which is what they're in right now with Dixon and Cochran. And Northwestern has no answer for the paint game. See, they have relied entirely on outside shooting. They started out hot, but cooled off considerably in the second quarter, and they've gone deep in the shot clocks. Another miss, and really another rebound job. for Cochran. Really nice job, especially considering the fact that Cochran's having to guard on, on the perimeter. They're in a switching man. We're seeing several dif defenses right now from the Cardinals. That one's thrown away, but... Wood dribbled it off her foot. Finally, a good look and a basket. Courtney Shaw able to get in for her first points. I'm just not sure really what Louisville was doing. I mean, when your teammate recovers to the ball, you got to protect the, the basket. Bono chases it down, barely keeps it from going over the half court, but they throw it away. Coming up in the AT&T 5G in the studio, Maryland scored 100 points again. They are into the Sweet 16. Oregon beating Georgia. And then, um, th they're going to break this down. Can't wait to hear what Coach and Rebecca have to say about Louisville struggling in this game so far. Well, I feel, bad, back for, in. I feel bad for Coach, Ep uh, Coach Landers that he has to break down the Georgia loss. Uh, he's got to be a broken dog in the studio right now. <laughs> a very sad dog. But what a great year, Johnny Taylor taking uh, Georgia. Get a win in the NCAA tournament. Louisville has more turnovers than field goals right now. Just seven field goals and eight turnovers. Dana Evans is back into the game. Let's see what her observations were, what she saw while she was on the bench that she could help facilitate, not necessarily her shot, but how she can get this team better looks against this Northwestern defense. Kono gets a good look from three and missed everything. That might have gotten tipped. Well, Louisville's not complaining about it. It was indeed, and yet Jeff Walls, when we talked to him earlier today, just had a conversation with Dana and said, trust your teammates. There's a lot of talent out there, and as you mentioned, she's not just a scorer. They need her to score, but as was proven in the Maris come from behind when her teammates have a lot of skill as well. Well, Lindsay Pulliam is struggling as well for Northwestern. She is now 0 for 6. So both teams headliner as far as scoring coming into this game on the struggle bus. And that's another reason why Louisville's still in this is because Northwestern has now hit the cold side of the bucket. <laughs> Pulliam and Burton both averaging around 16 points per game. Running for 32 points per game. Northwestern only averaging 68, which tells you how important that tandem is for this team that is known mostly for its defense. They average scoring 22 points off turnovers and have and only you're... two points in this quarter. And if you're Louisville, let the shot clock run down. No live ball turnovers. I mean, another bad one there. This is Northwestern. A Northwestern team that's number one in turnover margin in the country. They force 21 turnovers per game. Use your ball fake. Take an extra second to evaluate. Cochran gets it up to Van Lip, who's back in, playing with two personal fouls. Casa Robinson also in, so Balagoon is the only bench player in, and she just took steps. Alagoon, like Elizabeth Dixon, are Georgia Tech transfers. Playing their second seasons at Louisville. Three straight turnovers now for the Cards. Those transfers and 
even Kiana Smith, adding Alana Smith. I mean, Jeff Walls has done a great job. Two freshmen in the starting lineup. Nice take from the high post by Wood, who's had a really nice first half. Not going to show up in the stat sheet, but she's been active defensively as well. But Jeff Walls has done a nice job of putting this team in position, winning the ACC regular season. But they have just not looked like themselves. And Floor, you just mentioned the contribution Sydney's making, and she took it away. Long three goes in. First three hit by Northwestern since the first quarter, and Balagoon is in pain on the other end of the floor. Oh, looks like she got poked in the eye. Oh. Yeah. That hurts. That's Veronica Burton, the two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year who was on the floor with her. And Balagoon is bleeding her, her face. We're not sure where the blood is coming from, but there is blood there. I just hope it's around her cheek area and not her eye. And then Louisville now four straight turnovers. Northwestern has answered with a 7-0 run. And they're going to take her back to the locker room. Well, the good thing for Louisville is, well, first you hope that Balagoon is okay, but we've seen their depth work for them, even as recent as their win over Marist. Jeff Walls has a team that's centered around Dana Evans, but they have got some players off the pine that are ready to go, including Alana Smith. She's going to get called for the over the back there, but what a difference she made defensively the other day against Marist and their presses bringing energy. And this is a player that averaged 20 points per game in junior college. So she was coming in used to having the ball in her hands a lot as a score, but she's committed to defense and doing whatever it takes to keep this team on the win. And the national player of the year in junior college at Gulf Coast State, where she went after playing her freshman year at UCLA. Louisville, her third stop. Inside a minute and a half to go now. Louisville just 16 points. The average 79 per game. Dixon can't hang on. The Cats get it with 20 to shoot. Training staff looking at the right eye of Elizabeth Balagoon. Yeah. Excuse me, that was Cochran who could not hang on for Louisville. And it gave the Cats another chance with the ball. Contact by Evans forces the turnover. Now Dana in the open court. Burton able to get down there, but Evans scored anyway. And that's what Jeff Walls told Dana Evans coming into this game. Focus on your defense. And we've seen her do it this year in the ACC, Pam, in the regular season. She can shoot the gap. She's very aggressive. This is just not a player that plays one end of the floor. Back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year honors on the finalist list for National Player of the Year. From end to end, there are not very many players in the country that are as fast as Dana Evans. Mikasa Robinson moves it off of the pass. Give Mikasa the credit for that defense. Yeah. Yeah. And the nice pass to get it up to Evans, who turned on the Jets. Dana 
Tried to go up and under Dixon. Boy, she has missed more than a few shots at point blank range. Uh, Cochran, Olivia Cochran has. And those are the chippies. When you go to the locker room, you say, hey, we had made those buckets. This could even be tied at the half. That's a tough runner for Evans. And I like that Dana's at least getting into the paint. You know, a lot of the shots we saw her taking earlier on the first half were from the outside. And that's what this zone is designed to do. If she's getting to the middle of the floor, she's got options. They're going to get Evans for holding Courtney Shaw. And that's one of the things that Northwestern can take advantage of because Louisville has been doing some switching. So now that a smaller Dana Evans is in the game, can you get a switch and, and get her in the low block? Right now they're taking Ben Lift out. Haley has two fouls. So too does Dana Evans. Kono comes in. And they get both of those players out so they don't pick up their third foul in the last four seconds. Off balance shot, well off the mark, and then Cochran with the block to end the half. 20 points for Louisville is a new season low. They shot just 28%, did outscore Northwestern 10-7 in that second quarter, but boy, Jordan Hamilton got Northwestern off to a great start. Yeah, sometimes you just need a player that comes out with the confidence to get your offense buzzing, and that was Jordan Hamilton. How about the three-point line? Not the strength of the Northwestern Wildcats, but they hit enough early on to get a good lead. Hamilton's feeling it and moving the basketball well. Again, this is a team that normally gets their scores off of their defense, and they did that too, but their ability to knock down shots in the half court in that first half was a difference maker. Louisville has only lost three times this year, and all three of those losses, they trailed at the half. They trail here by 12 as we get you to Maria. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Second round action in the Alamo region, and Northwestern has not trailed in this game. They beat the two seed Louisville Cardinals by 12 as we head into the third quarter. The winner of this game goes to the Sweet 16 and will play Oregon, who pulled off the upset of Georgia. Stanford plays Missouri State, and all those games will be this weekend coming up. And we welcome you to San Antonio. Pam Ward along with the China Robinson. I think people are going to look at the score of the China and go, what? I mean, the 20 points, the fewest Louisville has scored all season. Yeah, you have to really credit Northwestern. They held, held Louisville to 28% from the field. But I just thought that their pressure, they took the cards out of everything they wanted to do offensively, um, covered the three-point line well where they were two for 10. The other thing Northwestern did was they hit threes, something that they have not done consistently all season long and that allowed them to get back get their defense set you see the runs here first quarter northwestern 25 points second quarter seven and that's where louisville started to impose their will getting the ball inside and really dominating the rebounding aspect of the game and dana evans came back in and started to get her feel in that second quarter so we'll see what she can do with that momentum Mikasa Robinson just picked up a foul. Dana Evans, just seven points, has missed four of her five three-point shots. And the bucket by Jordan Hamilton, who scored the first seven points of this game in the first two minutes, starts off the third quarter the same way. Evans left open momentarily, passed it up to take a, a shorter jumper, but that missed everything. Burton, the defensive specialist, drives against Van Lith. Van Lith, who has two personals, was limited. Had to sit out in the first quarter for quite a spell with the two fouls. Yeah, I'm eager to see what Haley Van Lith can do in the second half of this game. She has been Louisville's leading scorer in the postseason, but not good as the Cardinals have a turnover. It's got to be crisp right now. I mean, the turnovers hurt you in the first half. Northwestern has 12 points off of Louisville's miscues. Value the possession. Northwestern, as usual, doing a good job holding on to the basketball. Evans 
took it away from Burton. Draws the contact, missed the shot, but Dana heads to the free throw line. And that's where Dana Evans started to have success in the second quarter. First quarter, I thought she was taking a lot of outside shots. Her three has not been on, again, down the stretch of the regular season into the postseason. But when she's gotten two feet in the paint, she's done a better job of making decisions and putting herself in position to put points on the board. And at this point, she should, you would think, try to get to the free throw line more because she hardly ever misses over 92% from the line on the season. That was fifty percent on that trip, absolutely. Yeah. Boy, Evans just, the, you mentioned it, the last now six and a half games is not the Dana Evans that we are used to seeing. Last six games coming into this one, 17%, and tonight she's one for five, so that's actually gone up a spell, and one for five isn't good. Foul underneath, see frustration from Cochran. And that's another thing I've noticed. Some some of the maybe the body language and the facial expressions of some of these Louisville players, you can you can see the frustration. Yeah, I mean, and Northwestern will do that to you with their defense. And, and this is a team that knows that they can play better than we've seen them play. I mean, you heard Rebecca Lobo talk about it half shots that Louisville would normally make, missing chippies. They're just not playing like themselves. Lindsay Pulliam only has one point, gave the ball up on the other end, and another turnover for Louisville. Lindsay Pulliam again averages 16 points a game, and she is 0 for 6 from the floor. And still they're up 13. Shot goes into the hands of Cochran, who couldn't handle it. And that's happened a number of times as well. Tune in Friday, the Men's Ice Hockey Championship gets underway at 1 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app is Wisconsin and Bemidji State from Minnesota in the regional semis. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Number three off the mark, Van Lith couldn't hang on to it. It stays with the purple people. If we could go back and count the number of basketball possessions that Louisville has had their hands on it, and it's just slipped and gone out of bounds. I mean, there's just been tough bounces, 50-50 balls that the Cardinals would normally get. They just haven't been able to corral, and, and some of it is definitely Northwestern keeping them off balance. Hamilton with the miss. Northwestern has gone cold. Still lead by 13, however. They've missed 19 of their last 23 shots, but still up 13, which tells you how much Louisville has struggled. Van Lith crashes to the floor. We're gonna get Shaw for that foul, I believe. Van Lith is fine. She's one of the toughest freshmen I've ever watched play. I mean, she's so physical, really good at rebounding from the perimeter. Even though she's not big, she's only 5'7". She bounced right back up. Evans, another drive. And then a block, no, a foul on Sydney Wood. Northwestern in that first half. Sydney Wood has shots everywhere. She'll get called for the foul there, but there is not a defensive possession that Wood has not asserted herself in. Very good offensive rebound by Kiana Smith. And that's an area, again, where Louisville can really excel. They've got six second chance points right now, but rebounding wise, they have all the size. And if, when your shot's not falling, you gotta get to the glass. And that is the third personal foul on Sydney Wood. Anna Smith at the free throw line. It's both. Northwestern already has four fouls, so Louisville in the bonus on the next one. The 
Defense out there by Smith to knock it away momentarily. Satterwhite in for Wood, who sat with the three fouls, and a finish nicely for Shaw. Very good execution there by Northwestern. And the rotation on help side was late. Mikasa Robinson jumped in the air, and Shaw gets the score. And Lift gets it over to Evans, her three. Won't go down. Robinson, as usual, is right in the thick of things. She got fouled. And you see how quickly Northwestern recovered to the three-point line on Van Lith and Evans. Screen here. Cochran comes up and helps. Her player rolls to the bucket, makes herself available, and help side defense is not in good position to contest. Shaw gets an easy one. First foul on Veronica Burton. Casa Robinson, just a 57% free throw shooter, only averages two and a half points per game. A great value on the defensive end, and with the makes, here comes the pressure. Yeah, full court man-to-man -man here for Louisville. It helped him yesterday. Now they're going to trap out of it. Excuse me, it gets Maris. Satterwhite looks over to Coach McEwen. Or excuse me, uh, Burton does. And a nice finish again for Shaw. And this is a smaller lineup for Louisville on the perimeter than some of the lineups we saw earlier in the game. So Mikasa Robinson is getting caught in the help side in the post. And though she is a stout defender at 5'7", they are taking advantage of her right now. They needed that. Fiona Smith with the three. Gets the lead down to 10. Western has led by as many as 18 late in the first quarter. Another nice roll. They've got to do something different there on the high hedge by Cochran. Someone's got to be there to take a charge or at least be at the bucket to keep Shaw from scoring. And I don't know if they expect Cochran, Cochran to recover, but that's a long way to go. Shaw called for the hold on Cochran. Joe McEwen's team up a dozen. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Duracell Optimum. We are at the Alamo Dome. This is the North Court. They have uh, bisected it, and if you just go over, we're playing now on the North Court. In the South Court, that is where some second round coverage We'll continue tonight on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern, and here come the Aggies. They are in the building. There's Sierra Johnson, Iowa State, taking on Texas A&M at 7 Eastern time. Follow that with Texas UCLA at 9 Eastern. Cyclones in the house as well. You can also catch everything on the ESPN app. Ashley Jones, always a treat to watch for the Cyclones. Yes. So it's been very... awesome to have every game on. Oh, my An goodness. Exclusive uh, window. Awesome. Wall to wall women's basketball. Loving it. But I was thinking to myself earlier today as I was watching Maryland, you know, sometimes I know the fans may just kind of keep a focus on their team or on their conference. I wonder what they think about some of these other teams. I mean, you watch how Maryland has dominated or Baylor. Like, I wonder, what, you know, what, what fans yeah. think. They're like, whoo, there's some good teams out here, right? <laughs> like, yep. I know that's what I'm thinking. And I've been watching the play all year. They are March ready. Stanford, woo. UConn with a convincing win over Syracuse, even though they were missing a starter. Boy, Lindsey Pulling him now 0 for 7 from the floor. And another rebound that Louisville should have been able to secure and go the other way. And you see the frustration from Jeff Walls. I think it's almost like the basketball is like soaking wet and it's just slipping out of their fingers. Yeah, that's a good call. I thought Mott moved her feet before she got that handoff off. 
Turnover gives it back to Louisville. Excuse me, that might have been Shaw, actually. And Shaw was credited with the with the turnover, or discredited, if you will. Van Lith has only taken two shots. They've both gone in. And over the help defender. They gotta get Haley Van Lith more touches. Absolutely. Just five points, two for two. This is the closest that Louisville has been since the first quarter. They trailed by 15 after one. They switched on that pick and roll that time that had been hurting them. Louisville making a little bit of change to how they're executing there. Cochran came out on Burton, who then stepped back for the three, left it short. Here's Robinson, and here come the Cardinals. On the run, Smith. Got it. Took a while, but it got in there. Finally, Louisville gets a friendly bounce. Northwestern has only scored 15 points since their 25-point first quarter. Shot clock, dying. Another shot clock violation for Northwestern, and you knew the Cardinals had some life in them. 7-0 run to get to within five. Dana Evans with eight, Van Lift with five, that's it. It's still Louisville just down by five. Evans on the drive, puts it up, puts it in. We need a shot chart on Dana Evans because middle of the floor versus outside shooting, very different story for her on offense. Timeout Northwestern, they have seen an 18 point lead evaporate to three. It was a slow start for the Louisville Cardinals, but the All-American Dana Evans wants to have a say before this one's over. More basketball comes your way at the top of the hour on ESPNU as BYU, one of the upset darlings of the tournament, takes on Arizona. Arizona's first round win was their first in the tournament since they beat Oklahoma way back in 05. Check it out either on ESPNU or the app. What a season for Ari McDonald. If you have not had an opportunity to see her play, you need to do so. She is a fireball, quite the player. And how about Dia Barnes coming back to her alma mater, turning things around for Arizona. Yeah, doing a terrific job. Northwestern now has gone three minutes without scoring a single point. This is a 9-0 Louisville run. Good patience and ball movement here by Louisville. Cochran missed, but got the deflection on the rebound. And Evans, well, you can hear Jeff Wall saying, come on over there on the sidelines. He's been very positive with his team, both tonight and when they fell behind Marist in round one and going into the locker room at the half, he was clapping then and trying to get his team going. He's never out of a game. I mean, Louisville has always got to come back in him. I can say the same about NC State. I mean, we saw this throughout the season in the ACC where these teams can get down, but come back late. They always find a way to change things up. And that's great coaching on behalf of, of Wes Moore and Jeff Walls. Wes Moore picked up a National Coach of the Year honor today. Boy, Lindsey Pulliam. Yeah, she's struggled. I mean, Northwestern, she is their best option offensively in the half court. How about Mikasa Robinson? Doesn't shoot very often, but a little floater. 11 straight points for Louisville. They trail by one as we hit the one minute mark in the third quarter. And it's really applying pressure here. Hamilton, who started off scoring the first seven points of this game, misses from the outside, and now Louisville can take its first lead of the night. 
Cochran hammered. They'll head to the free throw line. Can we give Olivia Cochran, the freshman, some respect? She is working in the middle of that paint. She has exhausted herself trying to get position, gain an advantage. She's got 11 rebounds in 22 minutes. And has given Louisville a paint game, and that's where their advantage was coming into this. Cochran was a McDonald's All-American in high school, ACC All-Freshman team. She just outworks you. You know, some freshmen you have to teach work ethic. Not Olivia Cochran. Just tied up the game. Louisville, 8 of 10 from the free throw line this quarter. Remember, they got into the bonus at the seven minute mark. Northwestern has not been to the line in this quarter and has scored only eight points. Where can Northwestern go to get some scoring? They were hitting those three-pointers early, not really their game. Can they get hot from long range again, or can Pulliam give them some points? Shot clock an issue once again. Shaw working on Robinson, who's one of the best defenders in the ACC. Northwestern outscored 20 to eight in that quarter. We are all tied up with the trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. Fourth quarter straight ahead. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Welcome back. That is uh, the Alamo in San Antonio. It's a tiny little building. Look at this. Northwestern with 25 points in the first quarter, just 15 points since. And Louisville coming back from 19 down to tie it. Pam Ward and LaChina Robinson joining you. The winner gets Oregon in the Sweet 16. Uh, the China and Louisville starting to take care of the basketball. They got to the free throw line in the third quarter, and now Louisville has its first lead of the game. Very well run play and executed. It's Louisville's first lead, and Pam, you're right, it's the turnovers. Louisville gave up zero points off turnovers in that third quarter after giving up 12 in the first half. No turnovers in the last eight minutes of that third quarter. Hamilton with the miss, another miss from point blank range by Wood. Now it's Northwestern missing the easy ones around the bucket. Yeah, they look like Louisville did in the first quarter. Van Lip counted and she'll have a chance. Haley Van Lip is built for it. She is so strong off of the bounce. Splits the defense, takes contact. Team is ready for it. Her fellow freshman, Cochran. And Haley Van Lith had a scorer's mentality. She works extremely hard as a freshman. She's been on the big stage for USA Basketball. So she's been in some pressure situations. The run now for Louisville is 17-0. Finally, Lindsey Pulliam gets her first field goal of the game. It was 31 minutes in. Got to use a ball fake. The active hands of Northwestern are too good to hit someone on first pass without a fake. Robinson has it rim out. Shaw able to get the rebound. That's a chancy pass with three Cardinals in the paint, but Shaw hits the deck. She was fouled. Well, that's, some, that's really the area where Northwestern has had success in the paint. It's been with Shaw, and it's usually in a pick and roll situation, and Louisville has not been able to get their guards 
out of that switch. And credit Northwestern for some of the lofty passes they've made to Shaw. They've hit her on the move and just really recognized she's open and got her the ball. Foul was on Dixon. Cochran quickly came back in. She'll clog Courtney, things up a bit down there. Courtney Shaw is only a six-footer. This team has gotten better since she got back into the lineup, has dealt with some injuries, but her quickness works well in the defensive scheme for Joe McEwen. Moves well without the basketball. Comes up short there at the line. Wow, she's just a 39% free throw shooter. Missed them both. And lift. Guarded by Burton. Look at the backside helping on Cochran. This is what you heard Coach Landers talking about at halftime is the number of different ways you can play out of this matchup zone. Deanna Smith's come up with some big shots in the second half. Gets the lead to five. And notice that that shot came on weak side. Louisville got ball reversal. They've got to continue to use the second and third side of the floor. Hamilton quickly to the hoop, but Cochran shut her down. Burton fouled by Kiana Smith. Hamilton looked like she took a little bit of a fall, was slow to get up. They're still trying to make sure she's okay. He's going to stay in. Hamilton. Picked up her dribble and then threw it away. Joe well, McEwen to for George Washington GW teams to the Sweet 16 and his time at, in Washington, D.C. Burton with the miss after the turnover. And then, the whistle. Michael Price, Pulani Spurlock, Talisa Green, our officials think Michael's saying it, the ball hit the bottom of the basket. If it was Western. Rather. If Northwestern's got a chance in this game, it's got to start with their defense. They have to make an impact on this end of the floor, force some turnovers, because their half-court offense has faltered. And that was the concern for Coach Joe McEwen coming in. Van Lith was on the baseline. NCAA Women's Championship continues each and every game on either one of the ESPN networks or ABC. Sweet 16 starts this weekend, followed with the Elite Eight and the Final Four. Friday, April 2nd, with the semis, championship 6 Eastern on the 4th. And everything also available on the app. That's a held ball. Possession arrow keeps it with the Cats. Good to see Elizabeth Balagoon back in and moving well, looking good. A little fancy pass. Not sure coaches want to see that at this point in the game. Probably gave Coach McEwen a little bit of a heart attack, you know? <laughs> That's all right, you gotta, you gotta keep your coaches honest. Burton tried to thread the needle. It's a kick ball and they get a break. Northwestern has six seconds put back on the shot clock. Final game back in the game after she went out in the second quarter. The bloody face of the cheek and they looked at her eye. Balagoon foul. You do not want to put Lindsey Pulliam on the free throw line. We saw her hit a jump shot a moment ago. Now she gets to get to the charity stripe and get the basketball in her hands, get into a little bit more of a rhythm. 2,000, over 2,000 career points for Lindsey Pulliam. Only two other players in program history have reached that mark, Anuka Brown and Nia Coffey. William scored her 2,000th point in the first round win against UCF. Their first win for the Cats program in 28 years. 
Lamb gets one out of two. Northwestern just four of eight from the free throw line this evening. A trapping defense here by the Wildcats. Take some time off of the clock. Evans, guarded by Hamilton. Puts up the three, well short. Balagoon couldn't rebound it cleanly. And Burton comes up with it. Northwestern just one field goal in the last eight minutes to fall behind by four. Good look that time. Shaw with the height advantage over Evans. That same switch. Clock into single digits now, Van Lick. Gets it into Cochran, gonna make a power move. You see she's got the big height advantage over Shaw. She's just overshooting it. I mean, she is shooting the ball at 58% from the field. She usually makes those, but right here, Dana Evans getting caught behind, and you can hear Jeff Wall saying, get in front, that is too easy. If you're gonna switch that, Dana Evans has got to fight. Show some resistance, and her teammates have to maybe try to help her because she is too small to guard that. Northwestern with an opportunity to tie or go ahead. Courtney Shaw has eight of their last 11 points. That's a big miss for Pulliam underneath. Lukey Cochran working on the back side. Yeah, working hard all night. Kick out to Evans. Good look, good result. Inside out. That was the difference with the three-point shot on that possession. The ball touched the paint first. Dana's second three in nine attempts. Oh, Evans. Evans disagreed with that call, but she was gonna like this replay. Yeah, Dana Evans and the Louisville Cardinals playing better offense. Ball goes inside, back to Evans for the tray. Thank you very much, Maria Taylor. A lot more basketball to be played tonight. Dana Evans and Louisville, they were down 18 points in this game, and you see the, the largest comeback, Texas A&M against Penn State back in 2017. Some other of the big comebacks, and they're gonna scooch right in there with Maryland, who came from behind to defeat Texas A&M in 2012. How about this year, the comeback by the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets up there. Stephen F. Austin had him on the ropes, took overtime for Nell Yeah to pull through. Yeah. Congratulations to Georgia Tech. NC State in the Sweet 16. Louisville trying to get in to represent the ACC. Just a three-point game as we hit the four-minute mark. And that press by Northwestern may not seem like much, but Louisville needs time to find the right shot in their offense. And they're already down to five seconds, and only two players had touched the basketball. But, but the right one touched it there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Van Litt with a huge three with time expiring on the shot clock. She hasn't missed a shot, four for four. Get the freshman some touches. She has been their leading scorer in the postseason, ACC tournament and into the NCAAs. Hamilton hits a three. She came out on fire in this game, then cooled off. Proving that it wasn't a fluke in the first half. She has three threes. Six threes. Wow. She is half of them, pardon me. Three threes for Jordan. She only had 20 all season coming into this game. Louisville's got to spend more time moving the ball and less time holding the ball. I mean, the shot clock has run down on them. They've gotten lucky, though. Evans. Another miss. Hamilton comes down with it. Northwestern. This is again where they are at their best when they're running, and Burton draws a foul. Yeah, once Burton is going full speed in 
transition, you for, can forget about it. She's really crafty in finding a way to finish. She gets to the free throw line. But again, it's the defense of Northwestern putting them in this position. Third straight year that Veronica Burton has led the Big Ten in steals, and they are just really hurting themselves at the free throw line. Burton missed them both. My goodness, she's an 80% free throw shooter and she missed them both. And that might be some of the price you pay for all the pressing that Northwestern has done. I don't know if Burton's gotten a rest yet in this game. She's played 37 minutes. But you gotta make your free throws. Northwestern six of 12 from the free throw line this evening. Another takeaway. And then Robinson, who's such a pest. What a terrific play by Mikasa Robinson to save the ball inbounds to Cochran. Her foot was literally an inch from the line. I mean, how did she stay inbound there? Good thing she's got relatively small feet, right? <laughs> well, clearly I have good eyes since I measured it. Yeah, that was amazing. Cochran got fouled. Oh, my. What a play by Robinson. This is why she gets all that playing time. Just such a huge momentum player here. Look at that. Look at that left foot. Great court awareness. Gets the ball up the floor. Those are the game-changing possessions. That's the kind of effort that makes the difference between winning and losing this time of year. Williams' third foul sends Cochran to the line. Got them both. Let's lead back up to five. We're inside two minutes to play. Hamilton over Smith. Cochran boards it. And then Burton fouls Dana Evans. You're just joining us. Northwestern led by 15 after one quarter by as many as 18. 25 points in the first quarter. And they've scored 25 points since. Smith the Cochran who got hit from behind. Just Cochran's availability in the space she's taken up in the paint, whether she actually receives the ball or not, has been a difference maker for Louisville. Asking for the ball, occupying a defender, giving her team a target. Third team foul on Northwestern. Kiana Smith won't go in this time. Shaw able to get up and get the rebound. Northwestern needs to score. And that's a walk, my goodness. That's Sydney Wood who took steps. Well, Northwestern's having to exert a lot of energy on the defensive end, and it seems to have taken a little bit of a toll as we've seen some late game mistakes, missed free throws, and situations like what we just saw with Wood. This is a team that doesn't really turn the ball over much. Take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. The freshman for Louisville, Van Lith and Cochran coming up big. Yeah, they have. I mean, they have stepped up when their numbers been called. Cochran's been great on the glass. A double-double for her in only her second NCAA tournament game. Van Lith hit some timely buckets, four for four from the field, coming back after that first half foul trouble. It's not easy for freshmen in these situations sometimes to kind of break through the, in these moments, but I thought the timeliness of their contributions and then their steadiness down the stretch has really been impressive. 
The 13 rebounds for Olivia Cochran, a new career high. She does have a double-double, as you referenced, her fifth of the season. Did miss some shots in the paint that I'm sure she would love to get back, but you've referenced it. She's been playing hard and taking a lot of contact and coming up with big rebounds while Van Lith has been hitting big shots. Lindsay Pulliam, goodness, she's really struggled. One of 10, only four points. Averages 16 on the season. Timeout called by Jeff Walls. Just under 59 seconds left to go. Louisville up by five as the coaches will draw some things up. So if you're a Louisville fan or just a, an observer in general, should you be concerned that Louisville has fallen behind big both to Marist and to Northwestern tonight? Granted, they've been able to come back, but is this a cause for concern as they move into the Sweet 16, assuming they win? I mean, clearly, you want to be playing your best basketball, right? Um, that's what's most important, but the other important thing is winning and finding a way to win, coming back when you've been down. Do I believe that Dana Evans is going to have to be a contributor for Louisville to be at their best? Absolutely, and she has been a contributor, just not to the extent that she was in the regular season. But look at how the rest of this team has grown around her. And maybe this is Louisville's new identity and maybe it's just taking them a little while to settle into it. Dana with 13 tonight, but the struggles continue from the perimeter. She's two of 10 from three. Smith at the line after Woods foul. I also want to acknowledge go, go ahead, sorry. Ke Kiana Smith has also really had some, some bright moments in this game. Five for 10, I think she really held things together as they were wavering. Remember she hit a shot and we talked about her experience and it seemed from that moment on, she really took the reign of things. And Jeff Walls told us earlier today that Dana just needs to enjoy the game, play with passion, have fun. Thought she was putting way too much pressure on herself. And just let her teammates, you know, she can facilitate, she can affect the game in so many other ways. Welcome in those of you just joining us, Pam Ward and LaChina Robinson. Louisville, the number two seed in this Alamo region, down 15 after one quarter, down by as many as 18 points to Northwestern. But Haley Van Lip and company have come from behind and now up by seven with just under 56 minutes to play. Yeah, it's been a team effort. Kiana Smith, Van Lip, Olivia Cochran, the other freshman. Dana Evans stepped in and, and did some things here and there. She's five for 17, so it's been a struggle from the field, but it's also been Louisville's defense. I mean, Northwestern isn't a high scoring team necessarily, but I thought Louisville did enough in this game to be disruptive, to cause the Wildcats to struggle even more than they would typically struggle. And Lindsey Pulliam's night continues to be almost empty. Now one of 11 from the floor. Northwestern, a team that likes to feast off turnovers. They scored 12 points off turnovers in the first half, zero points off turnovers in the second half. Hamilton, short, Cochran with the rebound, and now Northwestern will be resorting to Fallon. Both teams in the bonus. Boy, Northwestern has really fought. Set the tone with that matchup 2-3, that tandem zone, covering a lot of ground, both on the interior and the three-point line for Louisville. The cards are only 
six for 19 from long range, but the minute that Louisville started taking care of the ball and they weren't giving up those transition points, those fast break points, Northwestern didn't have an answer in their half-court offense. Northwestern also no fast break points in the second half either. Van Lith delivers at the line. Northwestern struggled at the free throw line. There's a chance for a three-point play for Burton. Burton cannot foul right now. Giving Northwestern the chance to score. The clock is off and also allows them to set up their defense where they've been effective in this game in stretches. Shaw back in the game for Satterwhite. A little substitution for Northwestern. Last foul on Evans. Three-point play for Burton. Northwestern picking up full court. Looks like they tried to foul there. Trying yep. to get it. Yeah, Evans a little bit too fast. And if there's someone you don't want to foul, it's Dana Evans. So Louisville gets a win by just getting the ball inbound to her. She's fifth in college basketball, shooting 92% from the charity strike. Tonight, she is just one of two from the line. A good question for coaches. Do you play the season percentages or do you play the game percentages when you decide who to foul? I wouldn't foul her. Well, no, she's two of four. <laughs> that's why you're not coaching. That's, <laughs> that's one of the four million reasons why I'm not coaching. Hamilton. Cochran. One look at it. Cochran again. Mm. Monster game. Her 15th rebound of the night, building on her career high. We featured her and Haley Van Lith as our rewarding performance for Capital One. How about Haley Van Lith's efficient night? She's only taken four field goals, four shots from the floor, and she's got 13 points. Two for two from three, three for three from the free throw line. It's a good look. Cannot foul here if you're Louisville, and Hamilton is the only player that's really been consistent from three, so you want to know where she is. Burton's also had a balanced night from three-point land. Satterwhite hit one. The Northwestern getting their first NCAA win in 28 years, beating UCF in the first round. Their season will end at 16 and nine. Louisville just hanging in there. Northwestern came out firing from the outside, which is usually not the way that they are successful offensively. No points on turnovers in the second half. Cochran and Van Lith came up very big, and I'm sure Jeff Walls has some really nice things to say to Lindsey Pulliam, who was absolutely shut down in this game. Louisville trailed by 18, and since then, in the last 31 minutes to close it out, they outscored Northwestern 55 to 28 to win it 62-53. Dana Evans, another slow start, got things going a bit in the second half. Let's take a look at the updated bracket. Oregon with the upset over Georgia. Louisville will be playing them. Stanford and Missouri on the other side of this bracket. And with the victory, we are joined now by Dana Evans. Dana finishing with 14 points today. Dana, first off, uh, congratulations. Another trip to the Sweet 16. Uh, boy, you guys were down early by 18 points. How did, how did you come back? What was the key? The key was just getting stops. They came out hot, credit to them. Uh, they came out making shots and we just had to adjust. We had to adjust how we play defense. We had to rebound. We didn't get any clean looks early. We had to get used to that zone. I mean, they were wide, so we had to go into our post, but we, we figured a way to win the game. That's, that's what matters. 
Dana, this is the second game where you guys have had to play from behind, but the important part is you've gotten the victory. What have you seen in, from your team in these last couple of games that will help you as you move forward in the NCAA tournament? Toughness. We're tough. Uh, we, we got down early, but we didn't we didn't give up. We didn't get rattled. We stayed together. Uh, we trusted the process. We knew we had to get stops. We had to obviously start scoring the ball. We couldn't we couldn't get nothing early going. But I, I want to give credit to Kiana and Haley and O and Casa. Everybody they just came playing hard. They came up with big stops. Casa can't come up all the way from from nowhere and gets a steal at the end of the game with two minutes to go. That was huge for us. It was a turnaround. So it's just it's just the plays like that that makes this game so fun and and makes us win this game all right we'll see you in the sweet 16 you got oregon coming up next dana evans thank you very much our final score louisville wins it 62 to 53 for lachina robinson i'm pam ward carrie callahan jimmy platt all the great people in the truck in san antonio more basketball on the way here it comes iowa state texas a&m